know that sustainability is a word that the industry is just overusing uh, in most aspects, but I will tell you that the Brangus breed offers the cattle that are most sustainable of any breed that's out there. The Brangus female is such an amazing creation that she can take any climates that we have here in the United States and around the world and not only survive in it, but thrive. The cattle are fertile. Uh, they, raise, they raise excellent calves and, and, and they last a long time. Added panels on the truck, uh, added panels winged, uh, it's just more money in your pocket. Tommy Perkins, Executive Vice President of the International Brangus Breeders Association located in San Antonio, Texas. I think it's a great opportunity to get together and talk about uh, Brangus as a breed. We've been in, in around about 70 years now. We started in 1949. And I think that, you know, if you look at the, the way we've migrated these cattle and moderated them, turned them into a really fertile, functional set of females, we have a product that's really maternal uh, that reaches those fertile fertility attributes that we admire in a beef breed, but also those that when we hang those cattle, turn them upside down, they quality grade, they yield grade, and they make money for the cattleman. Uh, in terms of environmental adaptability, I don't care if you take them as far south and east as you want, if you want to move them to the north uh, central plains, uh, we just have cattle that adapt to that environment you put them in. And matter of fact, I think they excel when you put them into a pretty tough environment. I uh, just got back from Australia and South Africa, and we just see those cattle excel in those hard, tough environments. Uh, in terms of adding pounds of weaning weight to those cattle and still putting a product and replacement female that rebreeds consistently and has a calf every 365 days or earlier. So. Brangus female is such an amazing creation that she can take any climates that we have here in the United States and around the world and not only survive in it, but thrive. She produces a calf that once it starts life is far beyond any of its contemporaries that it will end up with in the feedlot, in the purebred sector, cow calf, whatever it may be. She's producing a calf on a yearly basis that's far superior to anything else. Yes, I am Bart Pope with uh, Miller Brangus. Um, I've been ranch manager here um, for the last several years. Um, I've worked for the Millers for probably about 21 or two years. Um, I started when I was in high school at about age 16. Um, I was hauling hay for them, um, kind of worked for them all through college and kind of knew I had the job uh, waiting for me whenever I got through. Um, they're a great group of people to work for. Uh, great Christian people, um, really believe in honesty and integrity for their employees and you know the people we do, do business with. Uh, the Millers uh, started producing uh, Brangus cattle probably in the early 80s. Um, that became their breed of choice for a lot of different reasons. Um, one of the main reasons is probably the adaptability of the breed. 
Um, they can survive and thrive in so many different environments and on so many different types of forages. Um, fescue, uh, the fescue toxicity from this end of fight uh, can be a huge problem for a lot of breeds, but the heat tolerance that's built in the Brangus breed seems to alleviate a lot of the problems and symptoms that you see um, in other breeds. They're very heat tolerant, and one of the main problems you get from the fescue is uh, it, it's basically it's a fever. You know, you elevate the body temperature of that animal. Um, and if it's an elevated body temperature, it's harder to breed. You know, it's harder on the animal as a whole. Um, whenever it has that fever, it's not feeling as good. It's not going to eat as much. Um, you know, a cow is just like me or you. You know, it has to eat in order to gain weight. And what are we after? We're after pounds of pounds of gain. Um, if that animal is feeling sick or just has an elevated temperature, it's going to probably be in the shade or in a pond or something and not out grazing. A brangus will be a lot more likely to be out grazing during a warmer period than some of your other breeds. One of the reason we, reasons we chose Brangus was their adaptability. Um, we're located here in southern middle Tennessee, which is what many people would have assumed was too far north for a Brangus cow. Um, but I, I find uh, they'll, they'll survive and thrive uh, in this environment and many others. Um, they can tolerate the colder weather, um, but they handle the heat very well. One of the main reasons they chose Brangus as their breed of choice is the the fact that the Brangus female is, is one of the most sought after replacement females. Um, she, she has a lot of maternal ability, a really nice udder. Um, they really do a fine job raising their calves. Um, also, um, they, they, seem, they tend to live a little longer and be more productive. Um, if a cow can have an extra two or three calves for you over her lifespan, she's definitely making you more money. If you're a commercial cattleman that's having problems with, uh, with having maybe a little too much English influence in your herd, um, I strongly suggest you look at the Brangus breed. You know, uh, we don't have a lot of those problems such as foot rot. Uh, you know, we, we add more pounds to those calves than a lot of your other breeds. Um, we, can, we can fix a lot of problems if you'll just give us a shot. Hello, I'm Nick Cornelison with Lake Majestic Farms, Flat Rock, Alabama. We live in the northeast corner. Uh, we have varying weather conditions and fescue is our only source of grass in our pastures. And we have found that Brangus cattle not only survive but thrive on the fescue uh, pastures that we're able to feed them. Brangus cattle are very fertile. Brangus cattle have very good udders. Brangus cattle have very good longevity. In our herd particularly, we have a few cows that are 17, 18 years old and they are still having calves. Uh, they still flush. They are fantastic cows. Um, docility is not an issue. We've been in our cattle. We can walk through our cattle. We can pet our cattle. Um, we love Brangus cattle. Let me tell you just a little bit about ultra black cattle. Ultra black cattle is an Angus crossed back with a Brangus. And they get, that gives us the ability to inject new genetics, Angus genetics, into our Brangus herds. Ultra black cattle thrive in colder climates. Um, we get snow here in Flat Rock, Alabama. And so there's no reason that ultra black cattle would not survive and thrive throughout the rest of the country in northern states. Brangus and ultra black cattle thrive with fertility and the ability to have 
top end carcass traits. We know that because we sell fresh farm beef uh, to different beef markets in Chattanooga and the Birmingham area every week. Um, we get to see that beef in the case. We can see how it marbles. We can go and taste it, the flavor, the tenderness, and every time we have never had a single complaint, not one, about our fresh beef, which is Brangus and Ultra Black Beef. Over the last several years, the Brangus Association has added genomic enhanced EPDs. When I got into the Brangus deal, I wanted to get the best EPD set of cattle and phenotyped cattle that I could get. I'm a numbers person, I deal with numbers every day. The Brangus Association gives us the ability to utilize EPDs that are accurate for weaning weight, yearling weight. They're adding three new EPDs to our EPD streams. We'll end up with 16 EPDs. Uh, that is measurement, measuring tools that we can utilize to predict what our cattle are gonna do before we mate them. That is in, extremely important to commercial cattlemen when they're buying cow, bulls to put on females. Um, they want to know birth weights, weaning weights, yearling weights. They need those definitions to help them select the correct bull for their operation. The Brangus Association is doing a fantastic job with our EPDs. In the Brangus Association, we have a program called THR, Total Herd Reporting. And that is important, extremely important, for the use of genomic enhanced EPDs. You are forced, being in the IBBA, to submit all of your data into the THR program, which increases our accuracies on the genomic enhanced EPD system. That is extremely important. And in that data collection will last for years and years and decades and decades to help us better breed cattle that will fit every environment. We in the Cornelison family <clears throat> are a family. I have a brother, I have a wife and two kids, a mother and father, a sister-in-law, a niece and a nephew. We are all involved in the Brangus cattle industry. My kids have shown cattle. Uh, my family all works around this farm. We all live on this farm. Raising Brangus cattle is a great way to raise a family. My daughter's breaking with the help of Vince, five show heifers right now. My son is horseback daily, helping Vince and them while he's out of school on summer break, and he loves it. I love it. This is what I want to do, Brangus cattle, is a good way to raise a family. Over the last several years, we have had the ability to work with several different families on an international level, from Australia to Mexico to Thailand. Um, in working with those folks, we have found there's great genetics in other areas. There's great genetics in the U.S. We need to trade both directions to help the IBBA and all the Brangus producers in America stretch out stretch out your wings, go to Australia, go to other places, go see those things. I've been to Australia. Uh, go see and visit those people. There's great people there. You'll build friendships that you'll never forget about. Over the last 10 years, the Brangus breed has really been on the upswing in all of Latin America. Of course, it's Latin America, tropical or subtropical, and the Brangus are fit for those climates. And over the, especially the last three years, Colombia, Paraguay, Argentina, Brazil, the Brangus is growing immensely. Brangus breeders from around the world are very much interested in the U.S. Brangus genetics, black and red. And just recently at the World Brangus Congress held in Houston, there were over 400 Brangus breeders from around the world there. So they came, they experienced they looked and it was a great experience, a great job by everybody at the Brangus Association, the Brangus Breeders, and I highly recommend someone that's interested to uh, investigate the, the potential there is in exporting their genetics. The IBBA also offers a tagging program unique to the commercial cattle industry. Uh, if you're a commercial cattleman and you have purchased ultra, ultra black bulls, ultra red bulls, uh, red Brangus bulls, uh, you can then Again, purchase these ear tags from us at a very low, reduced cost. Uh, and what it does, it upvalues uh, because we know the genetic makeup of these cattle. Because along with that ear tag, we also have the value to the ability uh, to DNA parent verify those offspring. And as you know, with DNA, and, and it's not going away anytime soon, to have that parent verification or that validation that it is the parent that we say it is uh, and have that genetic backup, uh, again, 
that yellow, yellow ear tag called a Brangus built ear tag. Uh, and it's very visible. Everybody in the industry recognizes that particular tag. And it usually adds value to those commercial heifers if you take them to the marketplace. Again, adding dollars to the bottom line of commercial cattlemen. Heterosis is a big thing with uh, utilizing in the Brangus cow herd. Uh, you know, uh, added pounds on the truck, uh, added pounds weaned, uh, it's just more money in your pocket. My name is Alex Johns. I'm the Natural Resource Director for the Seminole Tribe of Florida Incorporated. We manage a large cow-calf operation for the Seminole Tribe, spread over five ranches in South Florida. I also have a seed stock operation in Georgia, Salicoa Valley Farms. Uh, we utilize Brangus Genetics because the females work great in our humid environment in South Florida. Uh, the cows milk well. They do a good job of raising the calves in a harsh environment where we have lots of predators, lots of panthers, lots of coyotes, alligators, vultures, bears, you name it. The cow does a good job of keeping, a, keeping the baby alive, getting him to the weaning pens. Um, the Brangus cattle, they can tolerate the heat and they tend to wean big calves for us. And they also wean markable calves. They have the uh, maternal side covered, so the females, we always have a good demand for high quality replacement females. And we also feed a lot of our steer calves out. We have a box beef program, and those calves will tend to grade pretty high um, and yield very well. Uh, the carcass quality on those steers is, is pretty good. and they work real well in the marketplace. So with the Brangus female, she produces a steer or a heifer calf that works in the Florida environment as well as in the feed, feedlot environment. Some of the research that we're doing in cooperation with the University of Florida is on thermotolerance. We're looking at the different hair, hair types in Brangus cattle. We uh, test about a thousand females every year. We get the genotype, phenotype on these cattle. We're looking at the hair structure, um, how many sweat glands they have per square centimeter, respiration, perspiration, and we're finding that even though cattle look alike, they have, there's a lot of variation in how, how they can tolerate heat. So we're doing a lot of research on that, hopefully to come up with a genetic tool that we can use in the future to help with gen genetic selection of cattle that are a little more heat tolerant than others. Another study that we're working on is uh, looking at the quality of beef that Brangus cattle produce. We're looking at tenderness, uh, fatty acid composition. Um, we shear test a thousand head of steers that are Brangus commercial steers that we've fed, carried all the way to slaughter. And we're looking at getting the fatty acids composition back uh, as well as the shear test results. So that's some of the research we're working on with the University of Florida and hopefully we'll have the results of that coming out in the near future. I'm Brad Wright with Ranch Hand Analytics and uh, I consult for a number of Brangus breeders and, and uh, manage data for those breeders uh, in order to, to get data submitted uh, properly to enforce the, the quality of our EPD system. I feel like the Brangus cattle have got a, a very quality uh, suite of EPDs. Uh, we've just recently released uh, a new uh, set of EPDs for mature cow weight, uh, heifer pregnancy stability as long as a fertility index and uh, a terminal index uh, based on our genomic enhanced EPDs. Uh, we've been uh, incorporating uh, genomic enhanced EPDs for uh, the last couple of years now. Uh, really increased the accuracy of our EPD models. Uh, also increasing the accuracy of parentage uh, which, which contributes to uh, a really accurate model that Brangus is able to offer. Uh, of course, the suite of EPDs from, from birth, weaning, yearling, uh, carcass ultrasound, and now the new fertility traits, uh, we really have a lot to offer uh, commercial producers from a reliability standpoint uh, in introducing genetics that, that are going to perform in the way that we expect them to, to perform. I know the old system that we had, just if you had full brothers or full sisters, they all had the same EPD values, EPD numbers. But with your genomic enhanced EPDs and your 50K, uh, chips that they use. You can have full brothers that have different uh, EPDs. Uh, I know instances of where uh, two bulls, one was a Cavanese bull uh, and one wasn't a Cavanese bull and they were full ET brothers. So 
enhance, gen, enhance genomic EPDs as just a tool to just kind of fine tune the EPD program and just help you uh, do a better job of selection of cattle. I am the uh, past uh, chairman of the Breed Improvement Committee for IBBA. Where we came up with uh, uh, heifer fertility EPD, uh, a mature cow weight EPD, and a uh, heifer breed back, heifer pregnancy EPD. And we're also working on a maternal and a terminal index that'll be com coming out here pretty soon. Um, this, the committee and I uh, work diligently to, to get these EPDs out and, and indexes so you can select for more things inside an index. This is the direction we're going as far as, uh, as association goes, as far as that goes. And, uh, I uh, just think we have some really good uh, breeding tools for, for, the, for the entire breed. We are the first American breed in the industry to utilize a full suite of genomically enhanced EPDs for the entire EPD category we have. Fortunately, we have enough animals in our genetic evaluation, it's about 1.8 animals in our genetic evaluation, where we run these monthly now. Uh, and just most recently, in uh, June of 2018, we released three additional EPDs to our cattlemen. Uh, that would be a mature cow weight EPD, a, a heifer pregnancy EPD, and a stability EPD. Three very good fertility EPDs that were currently not available will really actually allow our breeders to, to fine tune uh, overall reproductive performance in their already exceptional Brangus cattle and ultra black cattle that we have today. I think another opportunity that we uh, did allow in June of 2018 was the uh, Im improvement and introduction of two selection indexes. One of those being a fertility index, which takes in a combination of many of these uh, fertility EPDs uh, to, again, to take an economic weight, gives you ability to, again, put more money in your pocket by selecting for a multitude of fertility traits as opposed to a single trait. Uh, and the last one of those indexes was a terminal index, again, allowing commercial cattlemen to ultimately increase overall gain in their cattle while not sacrificing carcass merit and, again, uh, making money on the rail with those cattle they fed out. You know, we're looking for uh, for cattle that will number one breed and, and have a calf to the pens every year. Uh, she's got to uh, come in a, in a light birth weight package, light to moderate birth weight package, but then grow pretty quick. And uh, you know, we try to focus on a big spread in our EPDs as far as from birth to weaning goes, or from yearling. And uh, also keeping in mind, uh, we selected for ribeye area for, for years here, and uh, ribeye area is not a problem. And IMF is certainly something that we keep in our, our breed, breeding toolbox. The beauty of the Brangus cattle is that we can then go into the feedlot at a time that other animals may not be able to. We've got the ability to slick off hair in the summertime, the ability to add hair in the winter. This allows us to be efficient no matter when we go into the feedlot, how the climate is at the feedlot, or where in the United States the feedlot may be located. Brangus cattle are most beneficial even to the people that may not retain ownership of those calves through the feed process. If you elect to take your cattle to the local sale barn, you can enjoy an environment where animals can be bid on without the risk of horns or missing colors or the ability for the sale barn buyer to sit there knowing that they're going to get premiums once those cattle are on the rail and they bid with confidence knowing they achieved that from both red and black Brangus allowing premiums once they get down the road. We recently harvested a set of cattle that were 65 percent dressing percentage beating the plan average is 62 percent all were average choice or better. All were yield grades of one, twos, or threes. The entire set of cattle were eligible for multiple grid programs and allowed that producer $129 per carcass in premiums. Hi, I'm, I'm Todd Harvey. I'm the Director of Marketing with Salcoa Valley, a division of the Seminole Tribe. I want to talk to you about the docility of the Brangus breed today. Uh, we breed here at Salacoa for docility. If, if the animal is, is, is a little too snorty out there for the commercial cow-calf breeder or the register breeder, we eliminate those animals and those genetics from our operation. Uh, we, it, it's very important today to, to, for the docility for the calves going into the marketplace so they perform better in the feedlots. 
as far as it, uh, as the um, what I'm seeing out there with the Brangus cattle, the Brangus breed is is a breed that is we're working on a study right now for the heat tolerance of the animal. We're showing that the animal can tolerate the heat in the subtropical climate where we're where our commercial operation is in Florida. Uh, the cattle perform well with the ear, and they also put more pounds on the calf. You get a, a lot of uh, growth on those calves, which in more pounds on the truck equals more money in the bank. My name is Richard Hood. I'm with American Marketing Services. We're a cattle marketing firm that uh, works primarily with uh, commercial clientele and purebred seed stock clientele uh, across the southern United Sta States from Florida to California. Um, with that said, our primary focus evolves around uh, Bosindicus cattle or eared cattle. That's cattle that have Brahmin or Zebu influence uh, in their composite stabilized to um, uh, a purity in their genomic makeup that uh, uh, works in the current technologies that we have to um, isolate genetics that work uh, and breed into a harsh environment uh, like we have here in the southern United States. With that said, Brangus is uh, about 80% of our business. Uh, we assist with uh, seed stock operations in building their programs uh, to find cattle and propagate them in a uh, large volume way that we can then transcend that into the commercial industry, uh, which is uh, the base of our living and the base of our clientele's living. We choose Brangus as a, as a uh, animal or product that we market due to the uh, environmental adaptability. Single most important trait of a beef animal is to have a calf every year. With that said, you have to have cattle that are environmentally conducive. Brangus cattle do that. They will adapt in many environments from fescue uh, from the Georgia, Tennessee, Kentucky uh, regions. We know that fescue um, generates body heat and uh, bovine and Bosindicus cattle tend to do better um, in all efficiencies on uh, fescue tolerance. Then you carry down into the uh, southern sandy loam environments with uh, Bermuda grasses and, and average rainfalls but uh, 30 to 40 days of over 100 degree weather, Brangus cattle thrive in that environment. Then you move into the Gulf Coast regions, uh, into Florida and then all around the Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Gulf Coast, where uh, those, those are high humid areas, almost subtropical in their uh, environments. Uh, these cattle thrive in that environment. Into Texas, which of course Texas is where we're from, and Texas uh, has just about in every harsh environment known to man. Brangus cattle are uh, the queens and kings uh, in, that, in that environment as well. Uh, with that said, the reason uh, that they are so popular is uh, due to the selection pressure that's put on them to put a product all the way, if you will, breed to the plate. Um, not only breed to the environment, but breed to the plate. Brangus cattle will, as a mama cow in the pasture, will do it for, for our commercial uh, producers. And then they can uh, select for the genetics that work in their markets. But at the end, it's all about ending on that plate. And uh, Brangus cattle on a large scale, if selected for, will hit that 100% uh, choice or better. Will, uh, on the harvest uh, data, time after time again you see cattle that hit 10, 8 to 10 to 15 percent uh, prime. The industry average is around 2 to 3 percent prime. So when you talk about Bosindicus um, yield, um, red meat yield, but again all the way back to the mama cow, one of the greatest females in the business. You can put 
any type of bull on a Brangus influenced cow and you maximize heterosis, you get environmental adaptability, and then you get a very efficient, profitable animal in all markets and most of all accepted by all buyers out there. In 2013, the International Brangus Breeders Association actually offered a new program for cattlemen around the world. And it really was an opportunity to increase our footprint to the north uh, in more in those colder climates, and we call it the Ultra Black Program. And I thought I'd just take a little bit of time and kind of explain how that program works. Uh, ultimately, you take a Brangus animal, a registered Brangus, mate that to a registered Angus or Red Angus, and that first cross we call an Ultra Black with a generation of UB1. So that UB1, which is a 50% Brangus, 50% Angus, is then made it back to a, a Brangus. That will yield you a 75% Brangus, 25% Angus, which we call an Ultra Black 2. At that point, with an Ultra Black 2, that generation of calves then made it back to a Brangus, which is your third cross, then yields a 100% Brangus progeny. And really what it's benefited is the ability to bring in new Angus genetics, and it accounts for, again, the great work that the Angus Association has done in improving performance of those cattle, uh, and, and actually bringing us some other carcass traits to our cattle. Uh, it, it's just a great, great opportunity for commercial cattlemen to, again, have confidence that they can add just a little bit more Brahmin influence in those cattle uh, without sacrificing their overall performance in the carcass uh, attributes as well as the feeding operations. Yeah, here in the uh, deep south, you can see some added things. Uh, if you get too much uh, English in your cows, like added uh, uh, coat, uh, not sloughing a hair, shedding hair off early enough, uh, you'll see some, some breeding, some infertility issues. Uh, you'll see some foot problems, leg problems, uh, you know, some things that can be uh, avoided if you increase your, your level of Brahmin content in your cow herd. The IBBA registers cattle in, in a multitude of ways, but we do have red Brangus, black Brangus, ultra black cattle, ultra red cattle, and most recently, uh, occurring about 2013, we've opened up the opportunity to, to grade up cattle from an ultra black to a Brangus. And I think that takes out some of the, the hard work that we saw throwaway cattle, cattle that had some off colors, uh, where, where it cost you a ton of money to get in the Brangus business uh, by going the traditional half blood, made it back to a three quarter blood. So now we can take an ultra black and three generations made it back to a Brangus, we've gotten back to a 100% Brangus uh, offspring to get back to a 5H3H pedigree. I think that's a tremendous opportunity to bring Angus cattlemen into the fold uh, because we always see as we move north, people have a little issue thinking our cattle cannot handle the cold environments. Uh, the good thing about the ultra black, it allows Angus cattlemen uh, to breed to a Brangus and those cattle do a really good job of herring up in those cold times but also shedding off in those hot humid times as we're sitting in today. And I think all, uh, ultra black cattle, ultra red cattle, uh, give them that opportunity to really enhance their economic bottom line uh, by bringing in t a touch of eared cattle uh, that get that heterosis, they get a kick in weaning weights, and when they uh, haul those cattle to the sale barn, that's money in their pocket. The Brangus Association offers a lot of services to its membership, but also to the commercial industry. And I think the biggest benefit commercial cattlemen have is, is IBBA's grasp and, and just taking the lead of DNA technology in the industry. We have been a leader in the single step technology, which if you looked into uh, kind of what's going on in the industry, everyone has migrated to a single step away from a double step. Fortunately, we, we were the ones that uh, started out with a single step and never had to go back and change our uh, current uh, analysis that we use in, our, use in our genetic evaluation, so which has been really good. Uh, and to the advantage of the commercial cattlemen, we also have a, a very unique, what we call Brangus specific, commercial DNA product. Therefore, meaning if you use an ultra black or a Brangus bull in your set of commercial cows, then you can DNA test those and, and we give back two particular indexes. One of those is an all purpose index if you want to retain uh, heifer replacements. The other is a terminal index for those of you that are retaining ownership in the packing plant and, and want to hang those cattle upside down and get rewarded for higher yielding, higher quality cattle. Uh, this DNA test, uh, it's a $25 test, uh, but it really does allow you to select those cattle that are going to make you the most money in the packing plant, but also those cattle are going to make you the most money if you're going to retain ownership of those replacement heifers. Uh, inexpensive, but a big uh, return on the, on the dollar. I think that if you're accustomed to maybe your granddad's Brangus, I think you probably need to come back and, and evaluate what our cattle really look like today. I think we have some really good uh, breeding tools for, for, the, for the entire breed. More pounds on the calf, you get a, a lot of uh, 
growth on those calves, which are more pounds on the truck equals more money in the bank. They can tolerate the colder weather, um, but they handle the heat very well. We have a few cows that are 17, 18 years old and they are still having calves. You're not going to get hurt on yield rate or cutability because they're going to have a big enough ribeye uh, to, to counteract any type of yield rate or, or over fat cattle you might have. Docility is not an issue. We love Brangus cattle. Come back to the Brangus breed. It's really not the breed you might have known it 20, 30 years ago. You'll be pleased with the product again with more dollars in your pocket.